Well, it's morning and we're leaving half past six today. It's just starting to get light. It probably looks lighter here than it actually is. Um, I've just fallen down the bottom step of the uh, <laughs> place we're staying at here. So that was a good start. Turned my ankle, but it's all right, I think. Um, and yeah, we've got 17.8 miles ahead of us and various different routes that we can take along the way until the point at which we get off when there'll just be one way and yeah we'll see how it goes today <laughs> So a different route out of Ledivos. This one is better, I think, all round in that it's slightly shorter, but it also avoids the main road. The two Italian gentlemen in the high visibility vests ahead, no matter what we do, we seem to end up with them. We're now much earlier than we usually leave, and so are they. <laughs> hmm. Pellegrinos, pellegrinos! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, the Buen Camino app notes that if you take this route, you have to be very careful to follow the official route because apparently there are yellow signs on the floor, yellow arrows on the floor, everywhere. I haven't seen one yet. Maybe they're all gathering together for breakfast somewhere. <laughs> So one of the things I don't think I mentioned yesterday was that um, I was really, really stiff. The last two miles into Le Digos, I was really sore. And because we've got such a long day today, I was quite concerned about it. And then I saw that at La Marena, where we were staying, they advertised massages. So I asked about it and they said they'd try to phone the person and let me know. So I ended up having a massage at six o'clock. And when I went down to meet the masseuse, um, it was a great strapping man who looked like he did sports therapy, <laughs> but he did an absolutely wonderful massage and sort of completely rehabilitated my legs um, and gave me some really good advice about the like, stretches that I need to be doing, um, as well as the electrolytes which I already take. Um, yeah, so that was really good, and I had a really good chat with him, but one of the things he mentioned, because he was asking where I'm from, and I said, well, the nearest city is Liverpool, it's very rural where I live, but we're near to Liverpool, and also to Manchester. So, of course, then we started talking about football, and it turned out that yesterday, um, so shortly after the massage, uh, Liverpool were playing Real Madrid in the Champions League final at, in Paris and everyone was watching it so when I went back down to the bar to pay for the massage um, they had the TV on for the football and lots of locals were gathering around to watch it and I found out today before we left that Liverpool lost we lost 1-0 to Real Madrid we're sort of oddly happy about this because it means we don't need to feel embarrassed but so far as you know we've only passed the two Italian gentlemen in the high visibility jackets they seem to be going a long way today as well um, I asked if they're doing the Via Romana um, the Roman way and they seemed a bit confused about that but they seem to be saying they were going to somewhere that, somewhere that sounded like Calzadilla they don't speak much English and they don't speak Spanish either so it's a little difficult but yes they asked where we were from and when we said near to Liverpool they sort of jeered and went ah thumbs down <laughs> so and that's just the first people we've met we're probably in for it today now I don't even watch football we don't really follow it <laughs> the sun's starting to come up
So we're coming into Terra de los Templarios and there's a choice of two routes here. We're going to take this left, which I believe will take us onto a section that runs level with the main road. The other one is probably slightly more scenic, but um, longer. <laughs> and given that it's already a long day, we want to be sure we're in good shape for that more remote section of the um, Roman route. So we've actually decided to do the slightly longer one. <laughs> uh, it's hard to tell with the distances. When you look at Godol Seco, um, I think that's the name of it, there's a website which gives you, you can kind of put in whichever place you're at and it gives you the distances from there to each other point. It's hard to know whether it's basing that on like the main Camino or the pilgrim route, the one by the main road or, or what. So looking at the two routes on Buen Camino, um, the app, this one's slightly longer, but it does go through the countryside, so it's a little nicer. It's not a great deal in it. So the website that I was trying to think of is called Godesalco, not Godoseco. Godesalco.com. And we've just come through Terra Dia de los Terra Dias de los Templarios, as you know. And after that, there's Moratinos, uh, San Nicolas del Real. I'm using my phone because I can never remember the names of them all. Um, they become more real when you go through them. I think that's part of it. Then we get to Sagun, which is a large town. That's where they've got, if you wanted to see the rest of the exhibition about um, the Virgin Mary with the sculptures and art, they've got this next two parts in the church that we're not going to have time to see that today. Um, but a lot of people will be staying over there, it's a popular stopping spot. And then after that we get to Calvada del Coto. Uh, that's at, let's see, it's reset itself. Segun is at 16.8 kilometers for us today. So that's what, about 12 miles, I think. Um, at Calzada del Coto, that's 21.2 kilometers. So, what's that? <laughs> what, 16 miles, I think, thereabouts. Um, no, it won't be that, it will be, let's see, 21.2 kilometers. Well, anyway, it's after that that we then turn off onto the Roman route and then we go off the Goddess Salco page because they don't cover the Roman route. A lot of people go on to Berciano del Camino, it's the usual stopping point if you carry straight on from Sagun. Um, one of the things with that is it's, it's, from what I read, a lot of that section is more like this, whereas the Roman route, I've been told, is more sort of true to the spirit of the Meseta and it's the most isolated stretch, um, quite unspoilt though, and just quieter in general. But then when I was talking to the masseuse yesterday and I said to him, um, you know, I've been told that it's the part, the Roman way, because he was saying it's quite a hard section. Um, I've been told that it's the section that's most true and full of the spirit of the Masita. He laughed <laughs> and he said it was the first time he'd ever heard that. And he said that his father always said you should never go to bed without having heard or learnt something new. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know what that says about what we're in for today? <laughs> Don't stop walking, somebody's <laughs> added a few words to that. <laughs> okay, let's stay to walk on this side. Not a great deal of traffic around by the sound of it though. Distant traffic on the main road that we can hear. Solar panels over there in the field on the right.
Well, we're just coming into Morotinos, which according to the app is 6.7 kilometers from where we started in Ladigos, and it's taken us an hour and 10 minutes. So that's not bad. We've stopped a little bit for photos, <laughs> basically, uh, with that lovely sunset, uh, sunrise rather. Uh, all is well so far. That little hill over on the right has what looks like little dwellings at the bottom of it. I wonder what they are. There's a single chair at the top. I rather fancy coming back and making this a stop. This is a really nice little village. That's another albergue just beyond the children's swings and slide there. I've been doing lots of crocheting by the look. Another albergue called San Bruno up ahead with the Italian flag on it. <laughs> seen any either but they're they've got kind of a mixed variety of stuff coming out you know it's, they've, yeah. they've got hay and they've got grain and they So we're entering San ne Nicolas del Real Camino and oh, I can see some familiar faces in there. Um, yeah, this is 9.4 kilometers. It's now just gone 10 past eight. So it's feeling quite doable. I think it's going to be a hot day. Do you want to go in here? No tables. We can carry on. I don't mind carrying on actually. Yeah. We want to stop. I mean, we could probably share a table with someone. So what was it? Socrates said that uh, the second bar is a cool place or something. <laughs> We're going on to the second one. <laughs> yeah. Both saying we don't really feel in a way we need to stop, but I think it's probably sensible to do so at this point. Um, the next one would be another, I think, what did I say, seven kilometers further on? So we'll stop here. Well, I recommend the second bar. It's lovely outside. Looks like there's a garden out there too. They do lots of vegetarian food. It's a really nice looking place. We're getting toast with coffee and fresh orange juice. To the veggie food that's actually really hard to get often I've been ordering things like salads and they come with like meat in uh, freshly made omelettes and this is what we're getting fresh orange juice <laughs> toasted bread with tomato olive oil and cheese and good coffee Yeah, yeah. 
Well, that was one of my favourite stops. Um, loads of vegetables, Spanish music, not too crowded, birds chirping. Just a really lovely place, a nice feel to the place. Leafy kind of little trees overhead. Uh, yeah, it was lovely. And a really nice choice of food and lovely fresh orange juice. So we've got about seven kilometres, a little bit more, to get to Sagun, um, which is quite a large town, as I mentioned earlier. And then I think a lot of people are doing the main route, which goes to Bertianos and Del Real Camino. Um, whereas we're taking the Roman route. But <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how many other people go off on the route that we're taking. Andrew and I were just talking about the urgency that we both seem to have and he was saying that um, it's not really an urgency in a sense and we were talking about the urgency of racing the sun and racing the heat that we both feel that we passed these other people who were just taking it steadily like the gentleman we were talking with before um, one was from Arizona and they just they walk at a steady pace they don't seem bothered they just do it. These two ladies who must have got out ahead of us today, they don't go like the clappers the way we do, but we, for some reason we're sort of, you know, we must get out early, we must beat the heat. And then we get out and we're like, yes, 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 we're doing it, we're doing it. And I'm like, oh, but look at the poppies, look at the poppies. And oh, but I must film this, must, ah, no, we've lost time. Ah! And it's sort of, It's part of our enthusiasm. We're not sedate the way other people seem to be. We're probably, I don't know. I can't really be any other way. <laughs> it's just the way I am. It's like right now I'm thinking there's a great big bird over there. I'll stop and look at it. And then it'll be a case of, we've got to make up time, we've got to make up time. Other people, they just get up. They pack their things away, they walk, they stop for coffee, they don't knacker themselves. Now all this like running around, like some sort of demented hare. There's a lovely floral smell in the air today. I don't know where it's coming from. It's sort of, it's not quite roses, not quite lily of the valley, but that sort of very delicate floral scent. It's the broom that smells. And I hadn't realized broom had such a strong smell. It's lovely. So this is the opposite of what we saw further back. Now Leon is visible and they've scratched out Castilla E. <laughs> I wonder how widespread that is, whether it's just a few people really that are wanting the two to be separate. Of course they call it Junta de Castilla y Leon, the joint 
province. Or whether actually a lot of people on both sides want to be separate. Don't know. So that's Sagun coming up. We'll be going probably quite quickly through there. Maybe we'll stop again. We might stop at the village after a bit though. It's a large place, I'm sure it's really interesting to look around. I never really like just blasting through a place like that. What have we got here? Huh. Via Franco del Biezzo is marked up there. That's where we have our second rest day after Leon. Burgos is over there. Leon up here. <laughs> There's a point along here where they strongly recommend on the Buen Camino app that you cross over the road. They say it's a difficult crossing, but it's the best thing to do. I can see a pilgrim on the other side a bit further down. So, maybe that's the place? Well, the inscription on this is interesting. Sagun Centro Geografico del Camino. We're at the center of the Camino. So that's the thing to do, to stand right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
So we looked up these seeds that were all over the floor in Burgos as well and they're from white poplar trees. So what we have ahead of us is well-seasoned pilgrims who have walked more than half of the Camino Frances. Unless, of course, they didn't start in Saint-Jean, I suppose. I imagine it begins at Saint-Jean, at least. Whereas somewhere off to our left, beyond the main road, there are pilgrims who have not yet walked halfway. Buen Camino. Buen Camino. Sometimes one realises one's own naivety. I was just thinking that it seems incredible to think, knowing all the distance that we've covered, that there's the same again ahead of us before you get to Santiago, let alone Finisterre if you go all the way to the coast. And I realised that in my mind, we're not that far from Leon really now. And from Leon, you've only got a bit before you get to the mountains. And then you just hop over the mountains and there you are in Santiago. <laughs> I've sort of mentally condensed all of this into a sort of, then you've just got a bit of a green chunk of Galicia with some rain probably. Some really nice, so a fly just got in my eye. <laughs> um, really nice mountainous scenery. Gets a bit colder, a bit rainier. Really beautiful and lush though. The last hundred kilometer sort of trot into Staria, which isn't really a trot I know, but it's the bit that people have to do to get the Compostela. And I've just sort of thought from Leon to Saria is the last bit of the bit that we're doing this time. And then you just got that last little four days to Santiago. How can it possibly be the same again? I do think that strange things happen with time and distance on the Camino. You get a completely different perspective on it. You know, I make light of it, <laughs> but there is something quite interesting about it. The gentleman up ahead is from Swansea, or near Swansea in Wales. I thought he was indeed from Wales because he has a Welsh dragon on his backpack. Andrew's been looking up more plants and these lovely little daisies that are at the side of the road aren't really the things that are going to make for the most beautiful of artistic inspirations. They're called stinking chamomile. <laughs> Buenos dias. the lady of the gourd up ahead with her orange backpack with the gourd attached. Once again coming into a large town you go through the new area and I'm sure it's very different from the old part. I'm looking forward to seeing what that's like. Look at that picture of the foot by the pharmacist. They know weary pilgrims are coming in, don't they? Lovely old house. It's the Albergue de Peregrinos Cluny there. I love these buildings.
and the laundrette straight ahead. Yes. Gracias. Cervecería. Peregrinos. Buen camino. I have café con leche and I'm having another Neapolitana and they gave us some little nibbles which look really nice. Well, we've had coffee and pastries and we've stocked up on water. I've put loads of electrolytes in mine. A little more than I would normally. And it's now just gone 10 to 11. So we've taken time in there but that's okay. <laughs> We're off. We're off, we're off on our feet. We usually sing that when we're off in the car somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it was quite the gathering place, that little coffee shop, wasn't it? <laughs> More people messing around by the big shell. We couldn't resist it. We did take still photographs there. <laughs> So this is the Refugio de Peregrinos Benedictinas with obligatory backpack. They open at 12.30 it says, but it's now 11 o'clock and that looked quite open. Maybe they just opened the front door though. It's quite an imposing looking building, look at that. I guess it's been a monastery. Here it says Mon Santa Cruz. Monasticos Sweet <laughs> Monasticos Cosmetica Natural Cremada Arena. Huh. Selling cosmetics. So that's the Rio Thea. Lovely bridge. The gentleman just ahead uh, asked if we wanted him to take a photo of us on the bridge. <laughs> it is nice to be somewhere where people just, there's no problem with talking to other people. It's a natural thing to do. <laughs> A Red Cross Centre. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be open now. This is a nice shady section where we'll be walking along. all the seeds. It's like snow again, you see. 
They seem to be following the Lady of the Gourd today. Andrew informs me that these trees that are passing underneath with the multiple leaves of each stem are called Tree of Heaven. This is an interesting tree. Look at the size of those leaves. So we'll find out what they are. So the tree I just showed you with the huge leaves is a northern catalpa, um, which in Latin is a speciosa, which apparently means showy. I think it was pretty showy because it was lovely and bright green and it had great big look at me leaves. <laughs> and another little anecdote about that tree. It's often used as a mosquito repellent. Now, apparently it has a very wet type of wood which gives off a lot of smoke when it burns and that repels mosquitoes. But I wouldn't want to cut them all down, given we've only ever seen one, to my knowledge. Little yellow arrow over there. It's not very easy to see where to go here. There's a little yellow arrow there. And then I think we're gonna take that path over there. Yeah, so actually we don't go that way. The way the lady of the gourd is going, she's going down there. Her name is actually Mariana. She's from South Africa, we've now found out, from Cape Town. Um, Yeah, we go up this way because we actually have to go into the town of Casada del Coto and after that we keep going and so we head north a short way before heading west and then our route, um, the Roman route, will then run parallel with the other route going east to west but first we have to go north a little. And this is our last place to fill up on water if we need to before it's only about a five kilometer rather a five mile stretch from here to where we're staying so we might not need more water actually we put quite a lot in our bottles before So we're going to stop off at the fountain here. I'm presuming it's going to be drinking water. I'm going to top up my water a little bit just so that I know I've got plenty. And that, well, my plan is basically to drink a load <laughs> after yesterday getting the muscle spasms. The frog sound I've been hearing, there's quite a lot of it coming from this pond. them all.
we have our nice little meal and we have somebody that was not invited to the party. Come, shoo. So this is where you either take the Roman route, Casa de Romana, which is what we're doing to Casa Dia de los Hermenios, or you go back that way on the Camino Frances main route to Bastianas del Real Camino y uh, El Burgo Granero, which is where a lot of people are going. So you have that one, or that one. Which one will you take? We opt for the right way. <laughs> the dogs, we saw them chasing this car on the way. Well, that we saw them chasing out this way. Look at them running back after it. Oh, there they go. <laughs> the little one. <laughs> so apparently the Via Romana is one of the best preserved sections of the Camino. Of course, over the centuries, the route has changed slightly, um, almost in the way that a river changes its course. Um, it's had to at various points. And this is one of the best preserved, dating back to Roman times, that still exists for quite some distance. Well, that's where we've come from. If you look down that way, it leads back to Sagun. And then facing this way, this train line, see it curves round a little actually, would take us to Leon. It's actually surprisingly well served by the railway here. You can see two other pilgrims way ahead. You've seen the film Jerry. There are nasty carrots. Deadly carrots. That one, that one. It was yesterday's theme. They're dotted all around. Deadly carrots. More of them over there. You wouldn't have thought that they were actually so toxic, <laughs> nor in fact that they were carrots, but that's what they're called. Oh. 
I see you. There are lovely white and black butterflies flying about. Mostly white, but they've got a lot of black markings on them. Quite large. One came right up to me just then. Um, I don't know what they are. I'll have to look them up. They don't... There's one. <laughs> just gone off to the right. They don't stop still for long enough to see them properly. Well, it might be a deadly cavern, but these beetles like it. We've just had two cyclists go past and one gentleman who we've seen earlier on, who's actually English. Um, haven't seen him for a few days though. And he didn't have any water with him, nor any luggage of any type. And he wasn't really looking in the best of shape, actually. We were a bit concerned. If we see him again, um, we'll ask if he's OK. But the lady went past, that went past, the second lady on a bicycle, um, I was doing something else and Andrew was on his own. She asked him if he was OK. We get so used to the sound of our feet and you can hear the birds around and various other sounds, the insects, um, when you stop. But much of the time you hear your feet. We were thinking about this section feeling very different now to other sections. It does feel you're not really part of a procession of pilgrims. Even now when it's busy, it's like post-Covid um, and it's the year of St. James. Not many people are doing it. Some are. So I think if you were on your own, I think you could feel vulnerable, but people are going past and they are checking on each other here. Um, so the gentleman back there who's from England, um, he'd stopped and we asked if he was okay. Uh, he was already going to speak to us and he asked if this was the Camino, but he's trying to get to Berciano del Camino, del Real Camino, um, and the rest of his family is there. We've seen him with his family and he didn't look good, to be honest. Um, we asked if he had water with him, whether he wanted a drink, and he had a little bit and he said he was fine. Um, so. We suggested if he walked further on to Casa Dia de los Hermenios. Um, I know from what I've read, the Donativo there, that people are usually really helpful, there's a shop there, and because it's such an out of the way sort of place, sometimes they do have people getting heat stroke, um, and generally they will help. So I think if he can get to there, but he's on the phone to people, so maybe they can even get a taxi here. That's a thought, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> 
Uh, I think it's easy to get to take the wrong path back there if you're not really double checking. If you just keep following the signs for like the yellow arrows. So I bet he's not the only one that's done that. We'll keep an eye out for him. So there's a rest area with shade and that might actually be a fountain. Is that a fountain? That's cool. I'm not sure. I don't need water. I'm fine. I sit for a bit. Not really. Yeah, there's a fountain there. Hola. ¿Qué tal? Another thing that I started thinking about was, I've um, just been talking about, what makes it different to other places? And I think in some ways, if you change the color of the path and made it white, and you change the trees into pine trees, and you made it cooler, I could imagine the land dropping away on either side, or maybe just on one side, and being above Betsy Coed in Wales, because they have cycle tracks there, similar widths. Uh, the same up in Scotland, I'm sure probably lots of places uh, where there are cycle tracks and yet it does feel different. I think maybe it's an arid type of heat. I do think actually if you were coming here in the height of summer, <laughs> unless you're from a country where it's hot and you're used to it, Maybe if you've got a parasol that you bring in with you. But I still think that to do the stretch we've done from Le Diagos and to do this, you'd have to leave. You have to walk through the night, which I have heard of people doing. Walk at night time. Or... Uh, just do a shorter section, maybe from Sagun. So it's a small amount of walking and you'd miss the heat of the day because it really is exposed. The sprinkler drum. Often beaten to encourage pilgrims on their route. Come, 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 come on. Quicker, quicker, quicker. It's a very jubilant one in the middle there, isn't it? We see houses. And here we are. So it is now half past two. And we've been walking since half past six. So that's eight hours for 33 kilometers. Which is not bad when you think of how much we stopped, really. It means we can do it. <laughs> and that's actually a relief. I know it's easy for some people, but it's not 
for me. All the um, times I talk about electrolytes and like what I was finding it hard and all of this, it is. I think particularly with Ellis Danlos syndrome, with muscles going into spasm and dislocations and everything, actually being able to do something like this and just seeing the world is so, so good. And that's a sign to Webbit staying. Hotel Rural Casa El Cura. So just speaking to this gentleman coming out of the Via Trajana, which is one of the other places that has private rooms, which look nice. Um, and he witched us, Buen Camino, and welcomed us, and said, That's the way Buenos dias. Gracias. All wishing us Buen Camino. It immediately has a different feel to it here. Yeah. It feels really... We're not one of, like, hordes of people coming through. They're actually immediately welcoming you. Yes. <laughs> and he was saying it, it's... You must be tired. You know, now you can rest and gather strength, is what he was saying. Alberga Municipal, here. All the Swifts. Look at them all. <laughs> so sell food and drinks there. Uh, Look at this house. It looks like wattle and daub or something. What do you think that is, Andrew? I don't know. But yeah, it is like it's straw, isn't it? It's like straw and earth. That's yeah. what those bricks were. So we're staying at the La Casa, El Casa rather, de Cura, which means the priest's house. And this is it. Hotel Rural Casa El Cura. That's it. So, check in from 2 o'clock till 8 o'clock. We're now 20 to 3, so that's good. So this is our room. Uh, 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 Hotel Rural Casa El Cura. It's the view from the window. There's fly netting. So it probably looks a little darker than it actually is. We had a really wonderful welcome. It does feel like you're know, the guests of someone in their own home, but the main area is a great open area with stairs going through the middle of it. Lots of woodwork. This is the area outside. There's a lady staying here from Somerset and she's just retired so she's decided to take her time over it. She's doing it over 80 days. When we arrived they'd just been picking strawberries so they gave us some from their garden. 
And Andrew says, I haven't tried them yet, I'll have to do that now. Andrew says they're the best strawberries he's ever eaten. If you don't grow up, they'll all be gone, so... Well, Hema, the lady at the um, Hotel Rural, said that this church will have people singing in it if we come at this time until half past five and it's now just gone 20 past. <laughs> This is the other church in the village. It's not used anymore. It was built during the centuries, uh, 16th and 17th centuries. And the lady over there has just taken us to this place because um, Chema at the uh, Casa Cora told us that here you can see how the Roman road was built. There's a section of it. And it's talking about the construction of the Roman roads. There are various things around this, for example, is part of the system for um, channeling water, obviously. And there's a milestone over there as well. They were roughly every 1,400, I think 480 or something, um, meters. It's interesting, there are notice boards all the way around. <laughs> they are all in Spanish. So there's information here about a um, tool called a groma that they used in Roman times for correcting the angles um, and making sure everything was level. We were just <laughs> reading it and then the sprinklers came on and they do go all the way over to the board just and then move away again. And that's how they keep it so nice and green. <laughs> so it's interesting, it was saying that the larger stones obviously were on the top and then there was a layer of gravel and then there was a layer of sand and then there was another layer underneath that of gravel and so on and they compacted it all and it would end up being about 60 centimetres deep. I guess this is an example of the sort of stones that would be on the top. This is presumably the um, remaining top layer. Maybe quite a bit of the top layer has gone. I don't know. But it would normally be six meters wide as well. Um, this isn't, it's more like three and a half, four meters wide. Yeah, you get wet if you read it for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to film a little there. I'll show you now. Um, a nice little diagram here which shows just how deep the different layers went and then you've got the person on the top. A lot of the buildings here have this sort of yellowy colour um, building material. It's actually a mixture of mud and cereal crops. The lady at um, El Casacura was telling us that they'd used that method to build that building. So this is what they're made out of. 
and it has to be resurfaced in some way. I, I'm not entirely sure how, but every couple of years. La Cajeca de Urbana. Urbano. Nice place. <laughs> The building straight ahead of us is the little church where the ladies were singing and this section that's been rebuilt you see there's a sort of section that's been reworked at some point that's actually where the altar is so there must be a story behind that One of the other things that um, Chema at Casa uh, El which is where we are now, was saying about the um, building materials that they use is that uh, it's actually warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer, so it behaves really well. I'm just going to go around the side of the building. I'm going to go around the side of the building to see what's around the back. <laughs> what it looks like from around the back. There is actually a sort of courtyard area at the back, but we haven't explored it from the inside yet. So our room looks out in this direction. Slightly to the left of where I'm walking now though. Emma also said that there's a storm due apparently at about 8 o'clock tonight and I hope there is because I do like a good storm.